Nigeria has recorded 436 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number of confirmed infections to 20,244. A breakdown yesterday by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control showed that Lagos recorded 169 new cases, Oyo 52, Platu 32, Imo 29, Kaduna 28, Ogun 23, federal, the Federal Capital Territory and Enugu 18 each, Bochi 17, Bayelsa 14, Rivers 8, Oshun and Kano 6 each, Edo and Benue 5 each, Adamawa 3, Borno 2 and Abia Ekiti 1 each. Now this brings the total figures recorded to 20,244 confirmed cases. 6,879 persons have been discharged with 518 deaths recorded. Joining us live now is Dr. Edoga Chima, who is also the chairman, Christian Medical and Dental Association, Enugu State University Teaching Hospital. And we also have Dr. Abiye Kalaiwo joining us to discuss about all of these rising cases. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. All right, morning. thank you. I just wanted to be sure that you are there. Thank you. Uh, now, Lagos has the highest record of confirmed cases. Could this be a function of greater testing? Doctor, I All right, uh, if I can just take it back on that. Yes. Um, so the thing is, when this epidemic started, um, you know, and to come into Africa a couple of weeks back, I told colleagues that it's just a question of and my suspicion is that the first place we'll find the of cases will be Lagos because Lagos is a metropolitan um, city. It's one of the and. Uh, I know that outside of that and the population of Lagos, um, the Lagos state government has been able to engage, I think, about four or five so, um, players who are also correctly tested. So beyond the efforts of the NCDC, uh, we apologize for the quality. Contribute to why. Um, all of this may uh, probably um, contribute to why um, the numbers are very high in Lagos. All right. Uh, Dr. Abiyya, I apologize for the quality of your line there, uh, but we still have Dr. Chima Edoga with us. Dr. Chima, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. For Thank you me. for joining us. Uh, now, Abuja is said to be a hot spot for community spread, even though I do know that you're speaking from Enugu. But what does this mean generally? Okay, um, Abuja is the capital um, city of Nigeria. So there, there is a lot of movements from different parts of Nigeria, from the northern parts and from the southern parts. And the movement, the interstate movements have actually been a problem. And then also Abuja has an international airport. And we know that uh, COVID-19 came into Nigeria via international travel. So it may explain in, in a way why Abuja and Lagos are also um, hotspots. So, but um, there is a lot of influx of people from different parts of Nigeria into Abuja. So that may actually have uh, influenced the community spread in the capital territory. All right, Dr. Edoga, there's also uh, rumors, anyways, you can help clarify, of an outbreak in Enugu also. Can you clarify that? Okay, um, currently we have um, recorded a spike in the records of uh, COVID-19 in Enugu State, and, um, and it has taken a burden or it has taken a toll on healthcare workers, especially those working in a private sector, you know, in, 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 in Enugu State. Um, currently, in my institution, um, Enugu State University Teen Hospital, we have some health workers, doctors, nurses, who have tested positive to coronavirus, and um, there is also um, an increase in the screening of healthcare workers to actually ascertain the number, the actual number of healthcare workers who are infected. But there is an increase in a uh, in um, number of positive cases in Enugu State, and without any prior travel history, so we can say that community spread has been established in Enugu State currently. Right. 
All right, we see a lot of unsupervised movement. You talked about uh, movement being largely a cause of this spread since the ease of the lockdown. Is it fair to say that the real figures may well be much more than those recorded? Yes, I think so, because the testing capacity of, of Nigeria generally is actually low compared to countries of a uh, commensurate population. We are not testing enough because once you begin to test, you can actually increase the number of positive cases that you have. There are lots of people who are asymptomatic and then people and the asymptomatic cases are actually the problem cases because they are the ones that spread these uh, infections and then the control measures that the public is supposed to be instituting is not established so the interstate travel also has been a problem whereby you have people passing through interstate borders and some of these borders are not defined you know it's not where you have the checkpoints you also have some of those border villages that people penetrate and enter into communities this is actually a very big problem and such interstate borders are very long and it's impossible for, we, for us to police them. So it's actually a problem. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's talk to Dr. Abiyye also. Dr. Abiyye, how much are medical practitioners such as yourselves able to engage the grassroots, especially uh, when some are known to state uh, that they believe COVID-19 is a hoax and not real? Yes, so um, a lot of effort is going on. I can tell you, um, particularly uh, through organizations like CMDA, um, you know, a lot of um, social and behavior change communication is going on. Um, I think uh, across the country, almost in every state of the Federation, we've been able to launch strong um, communication programs. But the truth is, I mean, um, health and the delivery of health care you know, and public health education is a very complex, you know, it's expensive um, venture that and you know, um, support from government. Government really needs to take the driver's seat. And, uh, you know, donor agencies also need to come in. I mean, there's a little we can do, um, you know, give people the information they need. But, yeah, that is, there, there are so many communication barriers. Like you rightly mentioned, people don't even... People are getting of fatigue where they don't really believe that this thing is there. So that mounts an extra um, barrier to the effort that um, you know organizations like CMDA and you know other organizations are making. So there has to be um, like a rallying point between government, you know, the private sector, um, the public sector, faith-based responses, and all those types of things for us to have a good response. Thank you so very much, Drs. Abiye and Dr. Edoga. Thank you.